Hi, I'm Pia Maria Torén and I'm the founder of Agile People. Today we're going to talk about psychological safety. And I would like to start to talk about why I think a prerequisite for agile learning is psychological safety. I've been thinking a lot about what is the most important thing that could boost productivity and engagement as well as performance, innovation, and a great culture in an organization. And after having worked with a lot of large organizations as a consultant, as well as looking at research on how successful company cultures develop, I believe that I know absolutely know what the most important one thing is. And that one thing is not intrinsic motivation. Neither is it engaged employees, a fantastic workplace, or servant managers. The one thing, ladies and gentlemen, that outperforms everything else in a workplace is psychological safety. That's the winner by far. And why do I say that? Let me explain. Sometimes we don't speak up because everyone is sitting quietly even if there is a question in the air that needs to be answered. Most of the time, we are too busy managing impressions instead of saying what we really think or asking the questions we need answers to. But you think, I'll just figure it out later. And sometimes we don't tell others about our ideas because we think that they may be perceived in a negative way when in fact somebody is really looking for a new solution to solve a problem. And we are sometimes afraid to look incompetent in spite of our superior knowledge about the specific situation. In this case, the nurse has a piece of information that the doctor is missing. The fact is that nobody wants to go to work and look stupid or incompetent. We all want to look smart and helpful, and we don't speak up if there is a chance that we will be backstabbed or a chance that what we say will be interpreted, misinterpreted. And this is really easy to manage. You don't ask questions. You don't admit weakness or mistakes. You don't offer new ideas, and you don't critique the status quo, the way things are. To break that barrier, we all must be brave and go first, and then we open up for others to do the same thing. Ask that question that you need the answer to. Tell people about your ideas. Psychological safety is a belief that one will not be punished or humiliated for speaking up with ideas, questions, concerns, or mistakes. Inform people about your observations. It could, in some cases, save lives. When the workplace feels challenging but not threatening, teams can sustain the broaden and build mode and oxytocin levels in our brains rise, eliciting trust and trust-making behaviors. This is a huge factor in team success. But who am I to speak about this, you may wonder. Is there any evidence that proves that psychological safety is really the most important thing? Well, we can start with the research made by Susan Whelan, who is a psychology professor from Temple University. She has been studying groups, processes, and concluded that in an immature team, the questions that you ask yourself will become an obstacle to perform. You focus on your appearance and whether you are accepted or not, instead of focusing on productive work. Social group processes take over too much of people's attention so that you focus less on productive work. A mature team will focus most of their time on productive work instead of thinking about their power position or competing with other team members. Let's continue with the Agile Manifesto, or rather the new version of the Agile Manifesto, Modern Agile, 
first communicated by Joshua Kurevsky's keynote presentation in Agile Alliance Conference 2016. It consists of four great cornerstones to keep in mind for everything we do in life, really. So one of the cornerstones is to make safety a prerequisite. It concerns not only physical safety, but mainly actually psychological safety. And then we have Google's project called Aristotle. The third example uh, that I want to highlight. This is a two, two year massive study on what makes teams successful. And it was called Project Aristoteles. Of the five key dynamics of effective teams that the researchers identified, psychological safety was by far the most important. The Google researchers found that individuals on teams with higher psychological safety are less likely to leave Google. They are more likely to harness the power of diverse ideas from their teammates. They bring in more revenue and they are rated as effective twice as often by executives. At first, they thought that if they put very competent people on the team, they would form the most successful team. But it turned out to be completely wrong. Instead, it was all about the interactions and the relationships between the members of the team that mattered most. If that safety was not there, the rest didn't seem to matter much. In a psychologically safe workplace, people can be their true selves, accepting themselves and respecting others. Here is a definition. A team climate characterized by interpersonal trust and mutual respect in which people are comfortable being themselves. And then I have a longer one for you. Psychological safety refers to an individual's perception of the consequences of taking an interpersonal risk or a belief that the team is safe for risk taking in the face of being seen as ignorant, incompetent, negative or disruptive. In a, in a team with high psychological safety, teammates feel safe to take risks around their team members. They feel confident that no one on the team will embarrass or punish anyone else for admitting a mistake, asking a question, or offering a new idea. Some more from this uh, Google study. When you spend some of the time talking about private things, instead of thinking about how you can optimize by only talking about your work or your job, team members get closer to one another and tend to pr produce better stuff together and the outcome increases from the team. The next example I want to bring up is Professor Amy C. Edmondson from Harvard Business School. She has conducted important research into psychological safety, and she was actually the one who coined the term first. Her research shows interesting stuff about people's learning ability. Her research shows that the higher degree of psychological safety and motivation and accountability, the higher the degree of learning and performance is in the workplace. How do you build psychological safety if you're a manager? Well, how do you create this environment where people feel free to speak up and admit errors and mistakes so that everyone can learn from them? Obviously, you need to be vulnerable. You need to show that you are not perfect and that uh, you make mistakes as a leader. Ask as a manager, what do you think about X, Y, Z? We need everyone's brains to solve this problem and I make mistakes too. It's about acknowledging your own fallibility and uh, showing that to the team. Ask a lot of questions. In a psychologically safe workplace, good performance is acknowledged and strengthened. And we can try and we can fail and it's okay because we believe that in the end we will learn. The cycle of psychological danger is 
that if we become afraid of making mistakes, then we tend to blame other people for them. And then we are also less likely to share different views. And we can become victims of the common knowledge effect. The common knowledge effect demonstrates that an irrelevant factor, the number of members who know a particular piece of information, can affect group decisions. If a piece of unshared information is crucial to making a correct decision, the result may be an incorrect decision. Instead, we want these cycles of psychological safety. If we instead can admit mistakes, we learn from failure, we share ideas, we will also innovate better and make better decisions. And that's all I wanted to say about psychological safety today. Have a good rest of the day. Goodbye.